Section three of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section three who can help laughing when an ordinary journalist seriously proposes to limit the subject matter at the disposal of the artist mr wilde's bad case to the editor of the st james's gazette footnote june twenty sixth eighteen ninety sir i have read your criticism of my story the picture of dorian gray and i need hardly say that i do not propose to discuss its merits and demerits its personalities or its lack of personality england is a free country and ordinary english criticism is perfectly free and easy besides i must admit that either from temperament or taste or from both i am quite incapable of understanding how any work of art can be criticised from a moral standpoint the sphere of art and the sphere of ethics are absolutely distinct and separate and it is to the confusion between the two that we owe the appearance of mrs grundy that amusing old lady who represents the only original form of humour that the middle classes of this country have been able to produce what i do object to most strongly is that you should have placarded the town with posters on which was printed in large letters mr oscar wilde's latest advertisement a bad case whether the expression a bad case refers to my book or to the present position of the government i cannot tell what was silly and unnecessary was the use of the term advertisement i think i may say without vanity though i do not wish to appear to run vanity down that of all men in england i am the one who requires least advertisement i am tired to death of being advertised i feel no thrill when i see my name in a paper the chronicle does not interest me any more i wrote this book entirely for my own pleasure and it gave me very great pleasure to write it whether it becomes popular or not is a matter of absolute indifference to me i am afraid sir that the real advertisement is your cleverly written article the english public as a mass takes no interest in a work of art until it is told that the work in question is immoral and your reclame will i have no doubt largely increase the sale of the magazine in which sale i may mention with some regret i have no pecuniary interest i remain sir your obedient servant oscar wilde sixteen tite street chelsea june twenty fifth to this the following editorial note was appended in the preceding column will be found the best reply which mr oscar wilde can make to our recent criticism of his mawkish and nauseous story the picture of dorian gray mr wilde tells us that he is constitutionally unable to understand how any work of art can be criticised from a moral standpoint we were quite aware that ethics and aesthetics are different matters 
and that is why the greater part of our criticism was devoted not so much to the nastiness of the picture of dorian gray but to its dullness and stupidity mr wilde pretends that we have advertised it so we have if any readers are attracted to a book which we have warned them will bore them insufferably that the story is corrupt cannot be denied but we added and assuredly believe that it is not dangerous because as we said it is tedious and stupid mr wilde tells us that he wrote the story for his own pleasure and found great pleasure in writing it we congratulate him there is no triumph more precious to your aesthete than the discovery of a delight which outsiders cannot share or even understand the author of the picture of dorian gray is the only person likely to find pleasure in it end of section three